What's up you guys, Avery here and welcome to a Pope's Dimension Force Therion deck profile with a hint of Albaz. So be sure to smash every living crap out of that subscribe button so that we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. I apologize again for using the dog water camera. Uh, my tripod really sucks. It doesn't point straight down, but it's a cheap tripod for a reason. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and dive on into this. This is the brand new archetype called Therion's that is released in Dimension Force that is going to be released in OTS stores on the 18th and worldwide on the 20th. I have a thunderstorm outside, so if you hear any thunder, I apologize. Um, and it's a really interesting archetype. It's very similar to Insectors in the fact that it equips a lot of monsters like each other from the graveyard, and they just activate in hand in order to special summon them as long as you have a Therion monster or a monster of whatever archetype they go with in the graveyard. So kind of like Dragon Rulers in that regard, but obviously like not as good. Um, but really interesting nonetheless. So we're going to go ahead and go through it here. Starting off, we are playing two copies of Therion Reaper Foom. And this is a really interesting card um, because it allows you as a quick effect during the opponent's turn to bounce one card in your spell and trap zone back to your hand to bounce an opponent's card on the field back to their hand. So it's a bounce interrupt, kind of like a compulse, but for the back row. And all of the Therions have an effect where whenever they're equipped to another Therion, they gain 700 attack, and the Therion that is equipped, they gain the equipped monster's preceding effect. So if Foom is connected to, let's say, uh, well, Therion Duke Jewel, then Jewel gains the effect of Foom in order to bounce something during the opponent's turn. And F Jewel has the effect that uh, while you control an equip card, Therion monsters you control can't be destroyed by card effects. So if Jewel is equipped to, like, let's say, uh, Foom, then it gains the effect that uh, your monsters can't be destroyed by card effects, specifically Therions. So, and then of course he has the effect for all of them to gain 700 attack. So keep that in mind as you go through uh, watching this deck profile. Uh, and then moving on, we're playing one copy of Bull. Bull allows you to pop a card. Uh, you pop a card on your side, and then you pop a card on the opponent's side. It's it's pretty good. Then we're playing three copies of Borea. Um, so Borea is essentially uh, your spell and trap searcher. Um, and what it does is that you can add a Therion Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand by sending a card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Um, and on top of that too, it's a plant type, so you can use it in Sun Avalon. So you may have been seeing some people freaking out that Sun Avalon have a really good card. Uh, yeah, because not only is this thing a beat stick at 2400, but if you equip it with a Therion, then it's going to gain 700 and be at over 3k. And it searches you other Therion spells and traps, which is of course very good. Then we get into the big bad boy himself. We're playing two copies of Regulus, and yes, we're using proxies because I don't have all the cards. And I'm also not going to play pay those pre-sale prices. So Regulus is an Omni Negate by sending a Therion card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Now, what I want you to keep in mind is that Regulus is an Omni Negate, but it does not negate and destroy. It just negates. So if the opponent activates something like, say, Mystic Mine, you can negate the Mystic Mine. You can negate the effect. It does not destroy the Mystic Mine. The Mystic Mine will still be on the field. It's not like if they activate something like Extravagance and then you chain Regulus. The Extrav will negate and then they won't get to draw. You know, Ash negates the effect. Regulus negates the effect. Ash does not negate and destroy. Regulus does not negate and destroy. So keep that in mind. I don't want you to get cheated. So anyone tries to say, oh, the effect's negated, and you play like, I don't know, a field spell, it, it only negates the initial activation effect. So like if I activated Trickstar Light Stage and you chain Regulus, I just don't get the search, but my Light Stage stays on the board. So just keep that in mind when you're playing against this deck or actually playing it. Then we are playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Springs because it's Ash. And then, yes, we are also playing the Brave Engine of three Enchantress and one Griffin Rider. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It's the Brave Engine. It's just so good. You gotta play it. I hope to God that this shit gets hit on the balance. I don't know if it will. Um, I'm being cautiously optimistic. Then we're also playing One Fallen Albaz because we're playing a small branded engine. Um, because you can just summon this and then fuse at the opponent's board. Or you go branded fusion to dump the Albaz and Jewel in order to make uh, Albion. And then you can make Mirror Jade off of that. So I'll be showing you some combos at the end of the video. 
for the spells, we are playing three copies of Crossout Designator because hand traps suck ass. <laughs> One copy of Call By because, again, I hate hand traps. We're playing three copies of the Argeo System. So Argeo System is actually pretty cool in the fact that it's actually a foolish burial for Therions. Uh, and what it does, you can only use uh, you can only use one effect per turn. Excuse me. Um, it's a foolish burial on activation, dumps a Therion monster. Then, uh, whenever it's in your graveyard, if you have another Therion card in your grave, you can activate this card's effect to target the other Therion card, then either put the Argeo system or the other card that you targeted back into your hand, then the other card goes to the bottom of the deck. So you can add back the Argeo system and put, like, say, Therion Regulus on the bottom of your deck or vice versa. So this card's really, really good. Uh, you've got to play three of this. It, it really gets your combo going because you can brick in this deck if you do not open up uh, a way to basically get a play going. Like, the way that this deck bricks is you open up all Therions, because they're all high levels. You can't just summon them. You have to have a Therion engraved to actually drop one out. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Pot of Prosperity, uh, because having one of six is really, really good. Uh, you could maybe play Extrabs, I guess. Um, I just, I like Prosperity. I'm sorry. Prosperity's so damn good. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Branded Fusion, because it's Branded Fusion. Then we're playing three copies of the Therion Disc Coliseum. So uh, this is basically your Trickstar Light Stage slash Rota of the deck, except it's once per turn, unlike Light Stage. You activate it, add a Therion monster from your deck to your hand, and any monster on either player's side of the field that would be destroyed by battle, you can send a Therion cards from your deck to the graveyard instead to prevent it from being destroyed. And then if uh, a monster is destroyed by battle, you can target a Therion card in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. Uh, yes, when a monster monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you can target a Therion monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So keep in mind that with all these Therions, in order to use their effects, cards have to go to grave. So the deck pretty much auto-loses to D-Fisher, it auto-loses to Macro, it auto-loses to Dimension Shifter. If you're playing Flunderies, you really don't have to worry about this matchup because you just hit them with D-Shifter and they lose, or you hit them with Barrier Statue and they lose if they don't have the uh, Wind Attribute uh, Therion, or if they're just not playing it. And then we're also playing One Foolish Barrel, and then Faithful Adventure, Triple Air Amazer, Dracoback, all that good stuff. They're playing Therion's Cross, so <clears throat> I, I, I love this card so much. Um, it's a monster negator that if you have Argeo system in your grave, you can not only negate the monster's effect, but also banish it. And just to activate it, you need to have a Therion's monster on the field. If you don't have the Argeo system, then you just pick which effect you want to do. Either negate the monster that activated its effect or banish it. If you have the Argeo system, then you can just negate and banish. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then for the extra deck, we're playing one Mirror Jade, Albion, and Lubelion. This is all that you need, um, because... You know, you can use Albaz to take one of their dark monsters and make the Loot Belly on. Uh, you'll dump the Jewel and the Albaz in order to make Albion, uh, and then just fuse away Albion and Albaz in order to make Mirror Jade. Uh, if you end up making Burt's Anaconda, then you just dump Branded Fusion and banish the Anaconda and Albaz in order to make Mirror Jade. Um, it's, it's versatile in that regard. Uh, pretty much you just use either the Albion or Loot Belly on to get yourself to Mirror Jade. And then whichever one you don't use, you just use that one as a dump to banish with Mirror Jade. So, you know, that's uh, that's pretty much how that works. And then the uh, rest of the extra deck stuff is just stuff that I copied from the OCG, which is where I got this build. Um, so you can swap things out as you see fit, depending on how the meta goes, since Dimension Force is technically not even out yet because it's only the premiere. <clears throat> We're playing one um, access code. We're playing one uh, World Gears. Uh, this card can blow with a whole board, which is actually pretty cute. Uh, one Mascarena, one Numeron Dragon, because your Therions are high levels, so you can go to, like, Dragalubion. One Unicorn, Dragalubion, Hope Harbinger, uh, Magistus Moon Maiden, Link Spider because of the token. Uh, this can be whatever you want. I just threw in a 15 card in the extra deck because I didn't really care. Uh, one Dehark, uh, one Anaconda, and then this could actually honestly be the 15th card that you play in your extra deck. I just pulled it today. The uh, Alba Renatus. Um, yeah, it's it's broken. It's Contact Fuse. If you're going against Dragon Link, you just set the Albaz and then Contact Fuse and then make the Alba Renata. So if you want more options, you can play this as well. Um, you know, you can have that be your, you know, 15th card or, you know, whatever it is that the meta calls for. So with that being done, let's go ahead and dive into a combo.
Okay, you guys, so this is going to be a two-card combo where you open up either Ethereon or a way to search Ethereon, in this case the Colosseum, and the Argyo system, which is essentially a foolish burial for the deck. You're going to start off by activating the Argyo system, which is going to dump you a Therion. If you open up other Therions, then you can really just pick whichever one you want to dump into the grave to give yourself more options. We're just going to say that we have the Colosseum in our hands so that we can get to our Regulus and have our Omni Negate. And the card that we're going to dump in this case, since we have access to Regulus, is going to be our Lily Borea. Lily Borea gives us a search for a spell or trap. So, you know, the more options we have, the better. And then we're going to activate our Colosseum. Colosseum is going to give us a search that is going to go ahead and search us for our Regulus. Now, keep in mind <clears throat> that when you play the Therions, they do activate in hand on the activation of the effect. And then uh, that will start a chain. So you can't just drop them out onto the board and then equip. We're going to activate the effect of our Regulus to uh, equip the Lily Borea to our Regulus. Well, I should probably swap that. This uh, this is equipped to our Regulus. Um, so Regulus is now an Omni Negate, and then we can send a card from our hand or field to the graveyard in order to get a search. So we can just say that we discarded a random card in order to get us Theory on Cross, and then we can set the Theory on Cross in our back row and end our turn. So now we not only have an Omni Negate in the form of Regulus, but we also have a Monster Negate in the form of Theory on Cross that because we have Argyo system in our graveyard can not only negate the monster, but also banish it. So this is a three card combo, but it's not like anything inconsistent. Um, this is just pretty much what the deck can do when it can pop off. The opponent opens up a pair of booty booty butt cheeks and there's nothing they can really do. No hand traps, no nothing like that that we have to worry about. So we're going to go ahead and start off with our Brave Engine activating Ride of Aramiser, giving us the Brave token and of course activating Faithful Adventure. We are then going to activate our Branded Fusion. Keep in mind that Therion Jewel is a light monster, so we can dump it with our Fallen of Albaz in order to make our Albion the Branded Dragon. And then Albion the Branded Dragon's special ability is going to activate Banishing Fallen of Albaz as well as the Jewel, or excuse me, the uh, Albion and himself are going to banish in order to play out the Mirror Jade. Uh, keep in mind too that when we summon the Albion that the Faithful Adventure triggers to give us a search of Dracobag, which at that point we can, once the chain resolves, we can activate the effect of Faithful Venture, adding Griffin Rider. Discarding the Dracobag, Dracobag's effect activates you, chain the Griffin Rider. Getting that out, equipping the Dracobag to the token, so now you've got your Omni Negate as well as your Interrupt. We can then finish it off by activating Therion King Regulus, targeting the Jewel in our graveyard. I'm just going to move this over for argument's sake so that you can see what is equipped to what. And so now we have the Regulus, which is a negate, not a negate and destroy. We have the jewel that protects not only the Therion King Regulus, but also the uh, the the token <laughs> equipped with Dracoback from being destroyed by card effects. Uh, because a uh, while you control an equipped card, Therion monster you control cannot be shown by your opponent's card effects. So I'm sorry, I misspoke there. Um, while you control an equipped card in general, so even if the jewel wasn't on the field, you already have the Draco back. But this has to be equipped so that it gains the effect. So if it was just in the monster zone, it wouldn't need to be equipped in order to gain the effect of the equip protection. So this is protected from being destroyed by card effects. He gains 700, so he's at 3500, and he's an Omni Negate. You've got this Omni Negate. You have the Interrupt. You've got the Bounce on the Draco back for the next turn, and he can't be destroyed by card effects. Your opponent's going to have to pop it by battle. Keep in mind that that was a three-card combo, technically. Um, you still have two other cards in your hand to work with, so you may have opened up a Theory on Cross. You may have opened up another Extender, whatever it is that it may be. We're not playing Branded in Red, so we can't do any shenanigans like that with the Mirror Jade. But the fact that the opponent is basically playing with a five-card, four-card, potentially three-card hand because of your interruptions is really, really good. So, guys, please let me know what you think in the comments below about this deck profile and combos. Do you think Ethereons have a chance in our meta, or do you think it's a little bit too little too late for them? And do you think we're still just going to get overrun by Branded, even with or without a new ban list, hopefully very soon? I hope to God so soon. Guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.